Welcome back to 5 Minute Drum Lessons, where we get it done in 5 minutes or less. On today's agenda, a little bit of fun, actually. We're going to look at cymbal chokes. Okay? Choking the cymbal. So normally, when you hit your crash, you let it ring. But a choke is when you immediately mute it, or you stop it from ringing by... Um, basically grabbing onto it to stop it from, from resonating. Okay? And we're just looking at this idea because it's, it's, a, it's a cool sound, it's a cool idea, it can add a little bit of flashiness when you're feeling it. Um, not to be overused, you know. Don't get carried away with it. Don't do it. Don't ever do anything to show off. Play music you know, and, but, you know, sometimes the situation calls for it, and when it does, you want to know how to do it, and, um, so yeah, basically what it is, is I'm playing a crash the way I normally would, and I'm going to accompany it with my bass drum, because that's typically how we play our crashes, um, although you don't have to, but that's how we'll be doing it today. And all you do is, instead of just hitting it and letting it ring, you have to have your other hand, whichever hand, the opposite hand of the hand that's hitting the crash. And for me, you know, I'm going to demonstrate it right-handed. I'm going to do a right-hand crash. And my left hand is ready right away to grab onto the cymbal. And what works best for me is to have the, the these three fingers, the middle finger, the ring finger and the pinky finger underneath the symbol and then uh, your thumb and your first finger on top and that way you can you can stop the symbol but you can also keep the stick in your hand and not be afraid that you're gonna drop it or lose it or whatever and you're not sort of just randomly grabbing at the symbol hope, hoping to stop it from ringing you want to have an actual plan as to how you're gonna grab it so grab it with the thumb and the first finger on top and then the rest of the fingers underneath and you you squeeze you actually do squeeze a little bit you know with the, it doesn't have to be super intense but you squeeze it to stop the ring um, and basically you can let it ring however much you want um, before stopping the ring right but usually like if you're gonna choke it quickly you're gonna just let it ring and then grab it because if you grab it too soon or even before you hit it which is a, not a great thing to do um, it's gonna look like this and then you're just hitting a symbol that's already choked and you don't get anything out of that so you do have to make sure that the stick hits it first and then you choke the symbol okay you let it that's the sound we're looking for. Okay? And then how to add it into your playing. Well, you can put it anywhere that you would normally play a crash. You know, any anything we've looked at or anything you know how to play. And so the first thing we'll look at, just like we practice crashing on one as the first crash placement, uh, we'll look at choking the crash on one. So I'm, I'm playing my groove. Okay? And then, oh, sorry, I need to replace these things. They're so, they're getting stuck on my hi-hat. But you can hear that um, I'm playing the crash and choking it on one, and then I'm continuing with my right hand in order to give myself time to get back uh, with the left to the snare. So one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So I'm going one, and two, and no, one, and two, and three, right? So I'm continuing the right hand to make sure uh, I can, can continue my groove. If you wanted to, depending what's happening around you, you could just play that on one, and then just come back in on the two. 
uh, with the snare and the hi-hat and continue after that. That would sound like this. One, two, three, four, one. So, sounds like there's a little too much space when you're just playing on your own, but in, in a musical context, it could work, depending on what's going on around there. But if you want to continue it, uh, you might just continue with the right hand. And then you can go, um, let's try a different placement. So, the and of two. Typically, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, that's the pattern, but I'm just going to choke my crash instead of letting it ring. And so it'll sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And you can hear that I'm going one and two and three. The first time I went and three, I didn't play the three on my hi-hat, even though that would typically be part of the pattern. Uh, but I just left it out and came in on the end of three. Three and four and one. So, just like when you're letting your crash ring, there's a little leeway before and after. Same when you're choking it. There's a little leeway. With, within a, you know, an eighth note before and an eighth note after, you can let it go, leave it out. You can play it. You can keep it uh, if you want to. But you don't have to. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... I mean, that's, that's pretty nice and... Um, I'm leaving that hi-hat out, but it's just a way you choke the cymbal, come back in. It's kind of flashy, it's kind of cool, just a couple ideas to get you started with it. Uh, investigate it on your own, and uh, see what you come up with. And if you have any questions, of course, as always, let me know. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, and I hope you got something out of the video. See you on the next one.